Hi guys, good afternoon. Um, my name is Farooq. I'll be your host for this UACT webinar. Uh, please confirm me if you can hear me and can see my screen. Please confirm me in the chat. Yeah, please confirm me in chat. Okay, okay. Excellent, excellent. I got it. Thank you. Okay, so without further ado, we'll be starting this session. And as you guys are aware that it is all important session on UECT, and it is our first webinar in this series. Uh, for those of you who are first time here, my name is Farooq. I'm the CEO of Lynchpin Training and Consulting. We are a, a specialized tax firm here in Dubai. And uh, I'm a chartered accountant. And for last around 18 years, I am in Dubai. And I've been earlier with the bank here. And at present, for last over a decade, I am into with this training and, and the consulting side. So, uh, OK, as you guys are aware that uh, the CD has been issued in this month itself. Uh, so the, you know, the overall idea for this session is to give you the main points of UACT, which are applicable on most of the entities here. Uh, you can okay, place your queries in the Q&A section. At the end of this uh, session, I'll be answering each of these. So to start with, first we'll see the overview, CT. So basically corporate tax is an indirect, uh, you know, is, is a direct tax which is implemented on the profits of an entity and it's implemented on the taxable profits. So uh, the CT was announced about a year ago at the start of this year and uh, it was in Jan and it will be applicable on the financial year which is starting on or after 1st of June 23. So from the Next year, the corporate tax will be applicable. And uh, if we see, it, you know, the timeline, the CT is issued in December in this year, applicable from June next year. Its applicability on your financial year is on those financial years which are starting on or after 1st of June, 23. And the filing of first CT return, it, okay, it would be after the end of nine months from the end of the X period. Now, in this case, the example is that if your financial year is starting in July, which will be next year. The financial aid would be ending in June 2024. Okay. Okay, Rabi, uh, you need to check at your end. Please give me a yes if you guys can hear me appropriately or if there is any sort of a distortion, please confirm me in the chat that everybody can hear me. Okay, okay, thank you, Asha. Yes, so you need to check at your end, Rabi. So uh, if my financial year is ending in June, my first year on which the CT will be applicable would be the financial year starting from July, 2023. Because CT is applicable on or after the financial years, which are you know, starting from 1st of June, 2023. Another example here is, Okay, another example here is that if my financial year, which in most of the entities here in, you know, in UAE are having, if it starts from Jan, it's in, in December. So in this case, my first financial year on which it would be, be applicable would be starting from Jan 2024. So it means my first CT filing would be in 2025 if my financial year starts from Jan. I hope it is clear. Please give me a yes in the chat box if this is clear. Please give me a yes. Okay, thank you, Shamjad. Now, it would be a federal taxation, which means it will be applicable across all the Emirates. 
and the administrative authority of course is you know is fta and the competent authority which is actually issuing you know all this okay, ct here is ministry of finance it is same as we have for vat okay here comes the skeleton the skeleton is that the ct has been issued in the form of sections here are 20 sections in total in the law and uh, we have just segregated them you know as they are falling into the same area so the first four are basically for definition and tax cases which includes your imposition your category of exempt and taxables then we have got free zones and we have got the you know the calculations and we do have the uh, the adjustments okay from the income grouping which is very very important it is the most complex area that if you are part of a group how you can you know treat the uh, you know the transactions and we have got the calculations and finally we have the admin areas where we have the information about the you know the fines and filings so it would be you know a central skeleton in case if you would be requiring to refer any area you can easily get uh, you know a, say a hint out of it scope and applicability so so far ct will be applicable approx you know almost on all the entities in ue with very few exceptions okay which i'll be explaining you shortly so you know, even if you are a business or you are individual, you will fall in, you know, in this category and I'll explain you how. First, if you are a business incorporated and uh, the first check, what you have to see that if you are falling under any exempt category, if yes, CT will not be applicable on you. For example, if you are a government entity or a fully owned state owned entity. Next, if you are individual and if you conduct a you know a business or a business activity which means you may be a freelancer here you may be carrying a small you know business of your own except if you are earning salary income only it will not be applicable but if there is any income which is kind of a business activity ct will be applicable on that so it means all those individuals who are having any business, CT would still be applicable. Okay, now in case if you guys have any query, please you can find the Q&A section here. You can just place it at the end of the session. I'll definitely answer all of that. What would be the rates? So if you are a mainland company, your any income which is below 375k ct will be applicable at zero percent so if your you know the taxable income is up to 375k technically you, you know you you won't be paying any x here but any income exceeding 375k a flat rate of nine percent is applicable and if you are a free zone entity and if you are earning you know a qualifying income okay which i'll explain you afterwards zero percent would be applicable on you know all of your qualifying income but anything excluding the qualifying income again the flat rate would be applicable so in simple form we we have got only two rates here zero and nine So we'll see a, a small example here. So if my taxable income in a in a given year is four hundred thousand, first three seventy five of it would be at zero rate. Okay, any amount exceeding three seventy five k, which in which in this case would be twenty five k, I'll be taxed at a flat rate, and my tax payable in this case is two two five zero. Same thing will be applicable. 
at the end i'll also show you how to do a small you know p calculation but our focus is to calculate the the taxable income first 375 is 0% okay any amount exceeding is 375k chapter 3 of uh, ct explains us about the exempt categories so there are you know approximately 7 8 persons who are exempted first two are if you are a government entity or if you are you no know, government controlled entity these two would be exempted if you are somebody who is conducting extractive business extractive business is that if you are exploring extracting or you know, removing the natural resources which mean oil gas or any such thing and uh, and the second category of such businesses that if you are somebody who is engaged in non extractive business also which means if you are separating treating refining or you know any such activity of natural resources again you you would be exempted Shamshad, uh, for the filing, we will still need to see that filing would still be applicable, but the assumption is, is that filing will also may not be required in this case, but you still need to maintain all accounting information to support your exemption. And uh, somebody asked that recording will be, will be you know, uh, okay, available. Yes, it will be available. Next, if you are a, you know, a charity organization, you will be exempted. If you are a qualifying investment fund, again, exemption would be there. Or if you are a pension fund, again, with certain you know, sort of the conditions, you will still be exempted. And if you are somebody who is incorporated in the state and you are wholly owned by exempt entity and you are also carrying out the exempt activities exclusively for your holding company. So these people are exempted. Apart from these, all entities in, you know, in UAE would be subject to CD. Let's now see the concept of corporate tax base. So the base is that CT is applicable on everyone who is a taxable person. And we have two types. Either you would be resident or you would be non-resident. Okay, so in this case, the treatment would be slightly different. So first we need to see who falls under this category. In this one, in, you know, in this uh, resident, we have three types. Legal, natural, or foreign. So, of course, anybody who is incorporated in UA, including free zones, would be automatically be resident. Any individual who who conducts a business or a business activity in okay, you know, in UA, it would also be resident. Next is foreign company. Now, it is very important. Foreign company which is incorporated outside the UAE, but it is effectively controlled from UAE, that would still be, be considered as resident. So it means that if I have incorporated, for example, in some in some other country which is giving me zero percentage of excess, and I am you know controlling the company from UAE. I would still be considered an, an entity incorporated here and I would be subject to CT. Non-resident is anybody who, of course, will not fall in the first category. And these are all those entities who are having a, you know, a permanent establishment in this country. First thing, incorporated, you know, outside, but are having the 
permanent establishment in this country, which could be a branch, an office, a factory, or, you know, any such thing. Or they derive UAE sourced income. So they are generating the income from UAE companies, okay, you know, or somebody who is staying in UAE, or if they are part of a group who is operating here. And again, they'll be treated as non resident now the uh, the all important area is that the taxability now in this case you know those who fall in this category of residents will be taxed on their global income okay so if I am a company, all my income which I generate for this company from across the globe, you know, I would be taxed. If I am individual, in that case also, and I am, I am, you know, conducting a business. In this case also, all my global income for that company only would be taxable here in UAE. So it is the first category. Second one is. If I am non-resident here, only the income which is sourced from UE would be taxable. Which means if I am a you know a branch of a foreign entity operating here, only my income in this country would be taxed. Or for that, you know, uh, the income which is being generated by this branch will be taxed here. Okay, or the income which I am generating of being part of a group. Now, another very important area is that if I am having an unincorporated partnership, which means I have just joined hand with somebody else and we have not you know, incorporated it as a legal entity you know, of its own, in that case, such unincorporated entities, which I'll call them as UIP, they will apply to FTA if they wish to be taxed as a company on their own. If FTA approved, they will be taxed as a business. If FTA will not approve or they won't apply to FTA, in that case, all partners will be taxed individually which means the share of this UIP would be split between the owners. And in, you know, in that case, the individual you know, owners would be filing the CT return and paying the taxes. Now, in this case, specifically for UIPs, we have the you know, allocation cases on which the income would be shared would be the cases on which they share the profits. So the individual owner, you know, as and when he'll be filing it, he can claim his individual expenses, which he has, you know, incurred in generating this specific business activity. Now, uh, free zone persons. For free zone, at present, FTA has given a very, you know, brief uh, information about the treatment, which I'll explain you here. First thing is that you need to establish if you are, a, you know, a qualifying free zone person. Is somebody who is incorporated in free zone and who meets all of the following conditions. First condition and the foremost is that you should be maintaining adequate substance in the state. It means you should have adequate substance, probably a, you know a, you can say a presence inside the zone, having the staff there and actually conducting the business out of it. And you derive the qualifying income. Now this income is yet to be explained, but if we see uh, the explanation, you know, the consultation document, which was earlier, you know, issued by the ministry here, we have certain, you can say certain sort of the hints. So it can be zone to zone income, 
any income from within the zone and any exports from the zone okay although it would get you know specific you know as and when we'll get the uh, the clarification from fta in this regard and also you should not have you know opted for to be taxed at the standard rate and the uh, you know if you are doing a transaction you are following the arms length you know and transfer pricing also which means that if you are having you know a group entity from zone and you are shifting some item to the mainland it should be on fair market you can say, you can say the price so it should not be given any you know undue you can say advantage to any of the entity Next important area, which is applicable almost to everyone, is how we do this calculation. So, very first thing is that we'll start from our accounting profit. So, if we have incurred accounting profit, we will be adjusting it with certain items. And finally, we will be, you know, arriving at taxable profit itself. So it means that if my accounting income is 100K, I may need to adjust my accounting income. And in, you know, in that case, after all these adjustments, the final amount would be my taxable income. And on that, CT would be applicable. And I'll also explain you what sort of uh, you know, uh, adjustment have to be in place. On what basis we can have the financial statements? So the preferred one is accrual basis. Of course, it has to be you know in in compliance with IFRS. Okay, unless FTA is giving you option for you know uh, on some other basis itself, and you know as an option, FTA can also allow you to prepare them on cash basis. Specifically, if you are a very small business. We have a separate section, you know, uh, on it that FT can specify a certain, you know, exemption or adjustment to those who are very small businesses. So we may see that the smaller entities, a shop or something like this, maybe, you know, they would be having the option to prepare these statements on cash basis itself. Now, how to arrive our taxable income? Again, as I said, that we'll start with accounting profit and we will adjust. The first adjustment which will be in place is unrealized gains or losses. Now, unrealized gain or losses, we may have the option in, okay, in few cases, we can okay, you know, include them in our income on the basis of as and when we are getting them actually being okay, realized. Okay. Else, okay, all the unrealized gains, we have the option to exclude them. Exempt income, which would not be subject to CT. So we would be, uh, you know, excluding them. Okay. Example is if it would be dividend. Intra-group transfers subject to certain conditions would also be exempt. And for those expenses, which won't be allowed for tax purpose, of course, all those have to be, you know, adjusted. For example, certain categories of, uh, you know, entertainment expenses, if we have to exclude them. If there is any adjustment of transactions between the group entities, and if there are the connected persons, which means the officers, the owners, and all those of an entity, any incentive, if the FTA will be giving, it would also be adjusted. Harsha, import expenses, if you are you know, uh, incurring, you can claim those. So you know, all these expenses you can adjust and after adjusting it, you would be getting that, uh, your taxable income, which then of course would be subject to the tax. Okay. Now, the exempt income, which of course we just have a discussion that exempt income would be excluded. Now, exempt income, the first is dividend. So if we are getting any dividend from 
UAE based companies, it is fully exempt. So there is no condition involved. So if you are investing in a company and you are getting you know, a dividend as a company, you would be exempt. Please, if you guys have any query, use Q&A section and I'll definitely answer at the end. And second is that if you are getting dividend from foreign entities, there are certain conditions on which uh, this would also be exempted, which I'll explain to you. If there are certain, you know, other income, for example, capital gains, foreign exchange gains, you know, all those things or impairment gains, all these are also exempted. Income from foreign branch. So if I'm having a foreign branch, I can apply to FTA that uh, I will claim its exemption. So it means in that case, I won't be including uh, the income of my foreign branch here in UAE income calculation. And finally, income earned by a non resident who are operating or leasing the aircrafts in UAE. Those are also exempt incomes. Now, in, specifically for this point number two, dividend from foreign entity, there are certain conditions based on which it would be exempt. Your shareholding should be at least equal to or or you know or greater than five percent plus all the following conditions should be fulfilled very important all of these conditions your holding period should be at least a year you know either you have already held it or you have intention to held it for a year at least and the company in which you have invested in some other country they should also be taxed at least on the same rate, which is in, you know, in UAE. Okay. Profit sharing should be at least equal to or, you know, or greater than 5%. Or if that specific, you know, investee company would be ultimately closed down, you will still get the 5%, you know, take it out of it. So if all of these conditions are fulfilled in that scenario, this option number two, which is evident from foreign entities, is also exempted. There are certain adjustments which are specifically given by FTA for the corporate tax income, which include the first thing is that if you are transferring any assets or liabilities within a qualifying group, and if you if you are having any gain or a loss out of it you may exclude it from your CT calculation. Now, this is important to understand that it's not about forming, you know, a tax group. That is a separate area, which I'll explain you afterwards. If you are part of, a, you know, qualifying group, which means that if the shareholding is at least 75% and you all are in UAE, Nobody is exempted. Your financial year is also same and you follow the same accounting standards. In that case, only your intra-group transactions, which are for transfer of assets and abilities, the gains would be excluded. Next adjustment also, which you can have as a relief is if you are selling out the business, which in simple form, if you are doing a restructuring of the business, in that case, if you are transferring your entire business or any independent part of it, and in that case also, if all of the following conditions are fulfilled, such you know gains also would be excluded, which means that if you are supplying, uh, you know, if you are selling it or transferring it to somebody who has some stake in you know in this country, either he is. A resident person or somebody on resident who is having a you know a permanent uh, the establishment which is a okay a PE in this country. You don't belong to free zone, very important area. And and of course the, the common one that financial year has to be same, accounting standard also has to be same. Allowable. Reductions, 
there are certain expenditures which are you know allowable wholly if you have incurred it on the generation of the taxable income okay and which does not fall as capital in nature which means the expenditure on fixed assets cannot be claimed in the same same year upfront okay there are certain expenses which are non deductible specifically which somebody has not incurred for business in that case also you cannot claim that and then if you have incurred certain expenses which are incurred on your exempt income this would also will not be there losses which are not connected with the business also would not be considered here if you have certain expenses which are incurred on both taxable and exempt income in okay in that case you will split it and then specifically calculate the appropriate share of expense if you are incurring some interest expense we have a specific clarification on this at the interest expense will be claimed on net interest expense basis which means i have interest income i will subtract my expense on interest from this income and on that basis i will see that if my interest income is greater than interest expense i don't need to do any other you know adjustment so i can claim all my interest expense in this case else if interest income if if my interest expense is greater than my interest income in you know in that case i can claim the interest expense only up to 30% of my ebitda which is earning before interest tax appreciation and amortization this is an important area so that you can claim only up to 30% of your interest entertainment expenses entertainment expenses which includes all of these examples meals accommodation transportation or any such expenses you can claim only half of it now uh, one thing which is important here these are only entertainment expenses which are incurred on the customers shareholders suppliers it, okay it does not specify for staff so we still have to wait and see and see that if the staff entertainment also will be will be treated in the same fashion or staff entertainment would you know ultimately would all be admissible expenses which we cannot claim is includes if you are giving any charities to somebody who is not in the list of qualifying business uh, qualifying public benefit entity which means that if it is not approved by the cabinet any charity you know if we if we give to such entities it won't be admissible fines penalties of course if you pay anything would not be applicable again bribes it goes without saying it won't be applicable dividends which you are paying to the owners it okay it won't be applicable or it won't be you know admissible here amounts withdrawn by an individual from his business so if you are carrying business in your individual capacity sole ownership any okay you know anything you withdraw from it you cannot claim it as an expense now here is an important area that we'll wait and see for the clarification that if an owner has formed a proper entity in the form of let's say you know llc and if the owner is withdrawing a salary whether it would be you know admissible you no know, or not i personally feel that if you are an incorporated entity and if as an owner i am withdrawing a salary which is fair i believe that it would be admissible but in this case we still have to wait and see the clarification from fd the corporate tax which is imposed uh, of course you cannot claim it as uh, you know uh, admissible expense input vat which was a recoverable 
VAT. In that case, also, you cannot claim it as your admissible expense. For all that input, which you cannot claim, for example, if you are an exempt business, of course, you cannot claim your input value. So such, such input VAT, it can be, uh, you know, it can be uh, claimed as your admissible expense. And of course, any taxes which are imposed on somebody which are, you know, outside the state, you, you cannot claim that as your admissible expense, but you have a separate area to claim that. And I'll explain you all that also. Transaction with your related entities and connected persons, very important and very complex area. Of course, I'm just giving you a glimpse of it, but as and when we conduct the detailed trainings, uh, this area will, will definitely cover a, you know, a lot of spe you know, specification which a company has to fulfill. So a related entity is something which is in which your shareholding is 50% or higher. And if you are individual, all your close you know, relatives would also be considered as relative party. So the connected persons include the owners, director or officers, or okay, any associated entity of these two. Now, any transaction with your connected persons and related party should be at arm's length, fair price. You cannot give undue benefit out of it. Now, in case if you will be having you know, loss, you can adjust it in future years and you can adjust maximum of 75% of taxable income in that specific year. So it means that if in year one, I have a loss in, and in year two, I have a profit. So previous year's loss, I can adjust, but only up to 75% of my taxable income in, okay, you know, in that year. Any excess, which will be unused loss, I can carry forward indefinitely and I can adjust it in my future years. So a small example here, as it is a bit complex area. So if my taxable income is 100K in this year, and from previous year, I have a loss, which I'm carrying forward, which is 125. Maximum, which I can claim in this year against my taxable income would be 75% of it. So the amount which I'll be adjusting is 75,000, which is, 100,000 multiplied by 75%. So my net income on which I will be taxed is 100K minus 75K would be here. And the balance amount out of this 125, which I cannot claim in this, in this year, I can then you know carry forward and I can claim it in my subsequent years. Tax group provisions, another important and very complex area, but I'm just giving you a gist of it. So the percentage based on which I can form a tax group is 95. So it means I should be sharing the, the profit in this ratio. I should have voting rights also, and the, the capital sharing also would be in the same percentage. And afterwards, I fulfill all of the following conditions, which are very specific, as we had a discussion earlier also, that all these should be entities operating in UA. Uh, they should not be in, you know, in free zone. The financial year has to be same. Accounting standards also have to be same in this case. The calculation of CT table is, in this case, the rates we already have an idea that zero and nine percent. FT has also introduced the concept of withholding tax. Now, in this scenario, withholding tax at present it is zero percent. Normally, it is applicable if you are paying 
to some entities which are you know outside the country so we adjust their tax here as in saudi we have around 15% but here at present it is zero so it, so you know it means that we don't have to uh, you know deduct any taxes on you know, payment of a foreign supplier but in due course it you know in uh, i mean it can be implemented foreign tax credits so if we have paid any taxes in some other country and if uae has a double taxation agreement with that country in that scenario we can claim the foreign tax credit in our final filing payment and refunds uh, you can pay the tax within 9 once of the end of your tax year which means if we go back to our first slide that if my financial year is is starting in jan closing in december so my first vat um, first ct return the time i have is up to september 25 2025 because in december 24 my tax year will uh, will be ending and you know after that i have got 9 months to pay out and also the filing tax returns uh, although i'm i'm sure that fta would be having the format online but they have already given okay a brief idea that on what basis uh, you, you know what in, in the the information which has to be included so in that case of course the, the, you know the period the information of tax payer itself submission date accounting basis either it is accrual or tax base amount of tax loss in case if there is any and so on so forth so these are all the all the you know and in mean, uh, information which we are expecting to be included in the ct filing finally the record keeping the record keeping is uh, you have to maintain all record which, which of course covers your uh, accounting information uh, which which will in, okay which will include your financial statements your uh, you can say the bank statements and including all of the records and you need to in, uh, you know maintain it for 7 years at least from the end of the financial year now this covers up almost all the areas which you guys would be expecting which are applicable on all the entities here in ua now that how you should get yourself you know equipped with in, uh, that you would be in full compliance with uh, the ct itself now uh, in this case the very first thing which you have to do and especially if you are you know a large entity or if you are you know part of a group your impact assessment is the first thing the overall planning on what areas ct is impacting you whether um, you would be able to to claim certain expenses or you will not be able to claim certain expenses your you know income structure your areas of you know incorporation all those things is your impact you know assessment exercise second one is staff training of course very important and the staff has to be trained especially the uh, the staff which is with your uh, you know accounts area and of course ct will be implemented and in that you have to make certain changes it may be your erp systems it may be your group structure it may be the business split itself after the implementation there would be a review of course that it is all appropriately being done itself and and of course ongoing support has to be in place that uh, which is for filing of the ct return and onward compliance we at linchpin are basically you know giving all these services and we would be happy to assist you guys in this case plus also you know for uh, you know all of those who are still still with us 
uh, which are you know quite a few. We at Lynchpin are also you know uh, announcing a portal for UACT and VAT, which is the first of its kind in you know in UAE, and it's called Text Box. It would be a portal where you can have unlimited queries with us. You have full search of all access ultimately, which at, you know, at present include VAT and CT, where you get monthly Zoom calls also for the consultations and where all the online trainings are also included. So it is a single subscription where everything is you know, included. I'll just share you know a glimpse of it and you can see at how useful it is uh, let me share my screen first please and and i will are you able to see my screen please confirm me in the chat box please confirm if you can see the screen of Xbox. Okay, okay, excellent. Now you just have to go to this site, xbox.a, and here you can see you have got two options. You can ask a query. So we have a form where you can select if you have UA VAT or for the corporate X itself, give the brief information. You can upload the information also in case you have a specific case. And we have separate packages if you are you know a tax consulting firm and you know as soon as you will be submitting it immediately you will get you know a ticket number and within same day hopefully you will get the answer also second important area which you get which is which is a free thing at present also is that you can search anything for example i want to search corporate tax group Okay, and if I click on this, so it gives me all the articles where these specific words are placed. So, for example, corporate law article 42, taxable income of a text group. You just click on this and you get exactly the article and all the information also for that. Similarly, you have VAT also here. So if there is anything on VAT, you can search it and it comes to specifically here. So for those of you who are still with us, uh, I would be I would be sharing a QR code for you guys where you can just give us a small feedback. And as and when we will be you know, announcing it as a paid subscription, you will get the free subscription. At present, it is free. You can go on this site, ask us any queries. You can search anything in future. It may not be, but at but at you know at present it is free. But for those of you who are still with us, you just scan this code or you go to this URL. Give us the feedback, and you know, as and when we'll be announcing it as a paid subscription, you will win a chance to get a free subscription of Xbox itself. So I'll be putting it on the screen so that you can scan it, just answer it, and inshallah, hopefully, you'll be getting the free subscription out of it also. Okay, now I have a few questions which I need to answer, so I'll be answering. Those in the meantime, please scan this code and uh, I expect all of you should be answering a small feedback. So I have the question which says uh, import expenses. Okay, I have already specified. Salik has asked that what kind of returns required to be filed by free zone entities who have no local transactions. I mean, no sale purchase from mainland companies. We expect that such entities who are only within the zone or exporting you know, out of it, you would be taxed at 0%, but you would still be filing the same CT return. 
okay import expenses i have already answered that import expenses you can claim uh, and uh, this uh, seminar would be available online we will be sharing with you guys the link to it afterwards the okay the questions i have uh, first with sanjeev and sanjeev says that what about branch of a foreign company okay that the branch is in uae yes if it is a branch of a foreign entity it would be taxed in uae itself second we have from regine uh, a dmcc company is doing trading of crude oils what will be the non extractive natural resource no you will not be in, you know, in this category if you are trading it it's only about exploration i hope it is clear harsha says that if you are paying the customs at port of import items that amount can be just yes i believe that it would be an adjustable expense for you okay again harsha what about the staff salary that is in our label contract 2500 but we paid 5k including allowance we can adjust 5k or 2.5k i believe you will you will still be able to adjust 5k and the ideal scenario is that you should be uh updating the the contract also because in this case of course you know the wps file should be the main thing okay i hope i am i have answered all the queries uh if there is anything which is still you know unanswered please feel free to type in here and i would be glad to assist you guys with me all five questions have been answered anything else okay huh? otherwise we are all done with this thank you very much for attending the seminar uh, and inshallah we'll be in touch with you guys we'll be sharing the webinar recording also with you guys and uh, hopefully you will you will be getting it by tomorrow itself thank you very much have a good day stay safe